been a follower of the Authors Leverage for a while, you'll know that we always talk about repurposing your book and how that is key to not only monetizing your work, but making a bigger impact. And so today, I'm super, super excited to have with us today, Ed Troxel. He is a video content machine. So let me introduce Ed and then get you guys introduced into the show today. So Ed Troxel is a video coach an online marketing expert teaching agents how to show up on video for their social media and marketing so they can attract more qualified leads and close more deals. Ed was ranked as one of the top 15 coaches in Santa Rosa by Influence Digest. And as a former Apple employee, Ed brings a unique skill to the table from sales, marketing, strategizing systems and processes to teaching the importance of showing up as yourself on video so that you can stand out from the competition and become the agent of choice. Thank you for being here, Ed. Let's jump into the show and let's bring in the real. Let's introduce the show. You're listening to The Author's Leverage. You've written a book, you got it published, and you know you can make a much bigger impact with it than you already have. Maybe you're in the process of writing and publishing and want to be smart about how you help others and make more money while doing it. Welcome to the Authors Leverage Podcast, your guide to building a profitable business and changing more lives with your published work. This is the number one show that brings you tips on making you a more successful author from the very best experts around every week. Our mission is to help you blast through the noise and get you clear on your path to success as an author. You'll be equipped with practical tips and insights from host Parshel Tashi and her featured guests. And you'll leave each episode more excited, more confident to get that dream authorship life that you deserve. So sit back, relax, and get ready. We're about to get real. We're about to clear. And from here, the sky's the limit. Here's your host, a former school teacher turned creative media entrepreneur and now founder of The Author's Leverage, Parshel Tashi. And welcome, welcome, Ed. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited about the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, I love being here on this show and that be real. That's what we're going to be talking about is getting real. I love it. Yes, yes. And you've been doing this for a while when it comes to video and, you know, what it takes to show up as yourself. And so this is such a really key and important conversation, as I know that many of our listeners are really making the effort to keep the conversation going about their books, to be in action about how they're, you know, always talking about it, right? So video and how we show up on video is such an important way and a tactic that can really benefit a lot of authors. Before we jump into some of those things, why don't you share a little bit more about your background and how you have, how the world is, or I should say the universe, what have you, has got you where you are today? Yeah, definitely. It all started back when I decided to leave my full-time job at Apple and do entrepreneurship full-time. And I will tell you, I was nervous not only to leave a full-time job because that's what everyone was saying, that's what you need to be successful. But also the fact was once I left, realizing that I had to market myself and my business and figure out a way to stand out online. And for me, I had to do that research and go through the different channels of what's going to work, what's not going to work, and how do I do this quickly and efficiently because I need to make money and I need to have a business that's going to survive. And so video was the answer. Now, I'm the one who always liked being behind the camera. I didn't want to be in front of it. And so for me, I found the answer to be video, but then I also wanted to crawl back into a ball because I didn't want to be in front of the camera. But I knew that in order to have my business survive and in order for me to stand out, I had to get in front of that camera. I had to get comfortable with being in my own skin and being able to show up as myself on camera and put myself out there online through the different social media networks and be able to really ultimately put my video content wherever I show up online from social to websites to anywhere else that you can go. And so that's where I really started. And just like you have here, it started with a show. And for me, it was all about creating a 
talk show that was fun for me in order to get me to show up and to be able to connect and build up my audience. And so that's where it started. Little did I know at the time, was I going to be a video coach? Because at the time when I started my business, I was just doing general business coaching as well as web design and tech support. Video was just part of my marketing aspect or my marketing strategy there. Wow. It's, and I love too that with that experience coming into this, like you said, you had to find a way to really stand out and to put yourself out there. So I can only imagine the fears and the obstacles that you've had to overcome. And like this, what most of most authors or anyone who is venturing to get on camera, what feelings and frustrations and obstacles came with that. Um, what do you feel are the biggest hurdles that you hear from other coaches, consultants, business owners, even realtors, I know you work with realtors as well. What are some of the biggest hurdles that they face when it comes to getting on camera? Yeah, there are a few, but the main ones are, I don't have time. We'll just throw that one out there right away. <laughs> I don't have time is the biggest one. But what I have found is that it's deeper than that. That's just our default when we don't want to do something. And so when we dive a little bit deeper into that, it really comes down to, I don't either, either I don't like seeing myself on camera or hearing myself on video. Mm -hmm. um, or I don't know what to talk about. There's these other factors here that are at play. And when we say, I don't have time, or I'm so busy, it's really deeper than that because we can make the time for it. We can create short videos. They don't have to be long, but we just don't necessarily know what to do, when to do it and how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we have to dive into those thoughts that are coming up. And just like many of you, who are probably thinking the same thing I, I did as well when I first started. I didn't like the sound of my voice. I didn't like being in front of the camera. I was nervous about people judging me and, and making fun of me or whatever the case may be. In fact, when I first started, I was doing video on a social media platform that's no longer around, but it was called Periscope. Mm -hmm. And I was there because I didn't want to do it on Facebook where everyone knew me, quote, everyone knew me, right? And because I was afraid that they were going to like my content or judge my content. And we all have those things and we have to work through them. And it's just like going to the gym if you want to get in shape or maybe you go for a run. We have to put in those repetitions in order to actually see those results. And it's not just I went on Monday and I worked out for 30 minutes. It's, I went on Monday every week for <laughs> a month, for six months, for a year, or I went Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like we have to put in that time, that effort and that consistency in order to see results and also to feel those results. And one of the big challenges too that you brought up was not really knowing what to talk about. And before we recorded, we were just saying that, man, an author has everything in front of them right there to use the foundation for ideas of what to share. So what advice would you have for authors who have a book already and they're wondering, all right, maybe I can do some video stuff. I'm not sure, but what would I even talk about? What advice would you share with them from what they currently have in front of them? Yes. Authors, you have a gold mine sitting in front of you. It might be in your lap right now. It might be on your tabletop. You have a whole script, a whole Bible of content that you can use to your advantage. And so I would say start with just looking at your table of contents. This is huge. You have a table of contents, most likely, in your book, and it has your chapters. Those could be your topics. And then you can pull out one to three talking points just from each one of those chapters. And then you can bring that to life by recording a video. This is the beauty. This is what most people want from coaches to consultants to agents that I work with. They want scripts, mm -hmm. an outline basically of what to talk about. You have it literally right there in front of you. You've done all the work. Now you just have to look at it with a different lens and be able to say, this is something that I can talk about on camera. 
and then I'm going to make a plan to actually record this. So there's a lot of different steps in the video journey here, what I like to call the video journey, but let's start with finding the content that you can talk about, which is right there in your opening of your book in that table of contents. And just to be clear, this is video content that's specific to marketing, that's specific to social media, right? And I know that when it comes to social media content anyway, there's a certain framework or a path that works really well for how to show up online. So that way what you're sharing is attractive. Are there any frameworks that work really, really well for you and for your clients that you can share with the listeners? Yeah, definitely. And keep in mind that everyone is going to be at different stages. So if somebody is listening to this and you're, you've never recorded a video whatsoever, you're going to be at a different stage than somebody who's played around with recording some videos, whether for social media, webinars, Zoom, whatever it may be. So first off, don't compare yourself too much because we're human. We're going to compare. Don't compare yourself too much with whoever you're paying attention to online and start where you are. So if you are just getting started with video, pick that chapter that you want to talk about. Write down a talking point or two or three. I always say up to three, so that way you have enough content to get you through your video conversation. And then I love to teach my clients how to use their phone to record their video content because it's there with you all the time. And it's equipment that you already have. You don't need to worry about anything else. So what you want to do is find a quiet place to record your videos and just start with a basic entry level chapter name. So whatever your chapter name is, give that out there and then go into your talking points. Now there's different formulas that you could do if you want to get more advanced and change it around where you could say a hook. So it's a catchy phrase at the beginning that's going to capture people's attention. And then you're going to go into who you are and then what your uh, call to action is. Very important to always have a call to action because you want to send people somewhere. And then you can tell more about your story if you want to. So there's different ways that you can structure your video. But to just get us started, start where you are, pick up your phone and start recording video that you may or may not share yet online. Because again, there's different stages in your journey here but just get comfortable with looking at yourself on camera and being able to hold your phone and talk about your topic so that you get comfortable with that. And then watch your replay. I say replay it means just go back to that video and watch it later so that you can see what you like and what you don't like about it. Cause you're going to have a lot of dislikes cause we're our own worst critic, but you're also going to have moments where you're going to think, oh, that wasn't that bad. Maybe I should change the light here. Maybe I should wear a different t-shirt. I liked what I said there. Maybe I should talk more about that. Like your brain is automatically going to pick out those pieces, but it can't do that if you don't record something and actually watch it. So that's a big one is record, start with something, and again, put in those reps and then watch your replays. And then later you can decide if you're going to share it and where you're going to share it and how. There's all that stuff that comes later. But let's start with the basic, pick a chapter, have a couple talking points, and pick up your phone and record some video. That's huge. That was so much. I hope everyone listening is taking notes on that because it was just literally everything that... I can't think of anything else to add to that. That's straight up and to the point. Use what you have in front of you. You've got the equipment. You've got your source of the content that you can use. And look, you can post it or not, right? Use it for wherever you're at in that journey. And someone like Ed can support you in making sure that you're held accountable and that you have the support that you need to be successful with that. And I know before we started talking, you mentioned your Think Big Think video. Yeah. Uh, and I would love for you to share a little bit about that and where folks can get a hold of that because I'm, I know that you can delve more into other tactics and strategies that are going to be supportive. So share a little bit about that with us, please. Yeah. So I have a free guide that 
anybody can pick up. It's just on my website, edtroxel.com forward slash think big. And I know we'll have those in the show notes. And so basically what it is, it's a free guide to help anyone in their video journey get started or improve their videos if they've already started and really help them by step actions that they can take today in learning how to get started with video, implement video a little bit more into their marketing efforts and really be able to understand where they can start sharing this video content because it's time for us to get in front of the camera, get comfortable and really start showing up as our true selves and be able to deliver the content that we have created, that we are an expert in up here and share that with our audiences online so that they can engage with us and be able to really connect because we're in a beautiful time online where even the big social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, they're all favoring now original content. Mm -hmm. They're favoring the fact that we can show up as ourselves, whether we're polished and very nicely presented or it's been a stressful day. We just dropped off the kids. We're sitting in the car. Our hair is a mess and we have coffee spilt on us. <laughs> we are in such a beautiful time that it's accepted across the board. And in fact, the more raw, actually, the better it can perform, to be honest. And so it's a beautiful time to experiment, have fun, <clears throat> and embrace video because it's no longer optional for your business. It's required because we know that people want to see you. We know people want to know and trust you. And the best way they can do that online is by seeing a video with you in it. I know some of you are probably thinking, I don't want to show my face. Can I get away from that? <laughs> you can. However, I'm going to encourage you to show your face at least every so often because we want to do business with people we know and trust. And if we can't see you, we can't trust you. And so it's really important. And for anybody who's worried about like competition or anything around that, understand that no one can be you, which is why it's important for you to embrace video and show up on camera because no one can do it like you. No one has the same passion as you do for your business and for your book and for sharing that information out there. And so practice being on camera and use your book as a prop. If you already got the book and it's printed, use that as a prop and show it off. Have it in your background. Have it in your hands. Read from it. That's a beautiful thing. You could do a whole show on Author's Corner with Janelle. Like, whatever you want to do. And then you're doing a reading every week. Like, how cool is that? Yeah. That's a really good idea, too. Mm -hmm. And just, there's so many, so many ways. It's just that getting over that fear, getting, getting over that internal hump that we all face is the key and just making the time for it. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And we all face it. Trust me. All oh, of us. Yeah. And even with the format that we're on today of video, we'll also consider a video podcast also. Yes. It's another way that might ease some of your concerns or fresh challenges with being on camera you need to share the stage with someone else. So that might be a little bit more comfortable for you as well. So I just learned that there's so many options really when it comes to this. But Ed, thank you so much for, for being here and sharing this, uh, these insights with us today. Are there any last parting words of advice that you would like to share with the audience? Yeah, definitely. Really, I'll leave you all with the three keys to success in whatever you do. It's showing up, delivering your greatness, and engaging with your audience. When you do those three things in whatever you do in business or in life, you are going to succeed and you will see those results. So just keep doing that consistently and everything else will work out. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to make notes of that. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, and one question I ask every guest that comes on the show is what is your one word? So the one word from Ed to the rest of the world, what is that one word? Oh, I have to, both of mine are two words. Okay. As, uh, so if <laughs> I was going to say show up, 
really show up is the big one because that's going to get you wherever you want to go. You have to be the one to start. And that's, so if I have to be one word, it would be start. But if it's two words, it's show up. Okay. <laughs> I love it. And thank you again so much for being here. And for those who are listening and tuning in, be sure to connect with Ed. His links and information is somewhere around this episode below in the show notes or in your podcast player. So I highly encourage you to connect with Ed and uh, see what avenues might exist for to get some support around video and how you can be successful with it. So Ed, thanks again for being here and thanks for everyone for tuning in today. We'll see you next time. been tuning into the author's leverage podcast if you're new here be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our latest guest appearances and receive the best of the best strategies on successful authorship today and be sure to connect with us and with today's guests using the links below this episode if you're interested in turning your bestseller into a premium and profitable online course head on over to our website and schedule a call with us today until next time remember Publishing creates credibility, but products create cash. You can repurpose your book as a learning experience to make the impact and the income you want as an author. We'll see you on the next episode of The Author's Level.